What's up everybody, my name is Astonishing Picks and welcome to another review. And today we are reviewing the Medicom Mafex Figure 185 Amazing Spider-Man Classic Suit. And I've been looking forward for this figure for a while now. It is probably one of the best figures that I have probably handled. And I know that I got this figure back in 2022, I just haven't been able to make a a proper review until well around this time I guess uh, because I've been doing a lot in the background but I've just been busy and I uh, just wanted to share my thoughts and my opinions about it and what I think of it and if I recommend it or not but so anyways uh, before we get into this uh, review and do it properly I just want to actually show you guys the packaging for this figure as you could see it is uh well i guess less dense or smaller than an average mafex box i don't have anything to compare it to unfortunately i sold all my mafex figures or the ones that i had but as you can see this is usually smaller i would say that it's about almost the same size as a marvel legends packaging but i would say a little bit smaller and I do really like the packaging and the style that they have. You know, it has that comic feel to it. And you can see everything that the figure comes with. And again, the colors just pop and everything. So I really do enjoy these Mafex figures for what they have. And again, you can see all the information. The, here's the top, here's the bottom. And you guys already looked at the back, but yeah. So here's a closer look at the figure. Sorry for my shaky hands, but as you can see, this figure is packed with details. And I know that this uh, comic figure, specifically, uh, I think it's modeled after the Todd McFarlane design or the Mark Bagley design. I know that there are a lot of uh, comic book fans that are or other collectors that say that it's probably Mark Bagley. To be honest, personally, I'm not too familiar with like the difference differences or the minor differences the artists have. So take it as you will. Uh, I don't know much about the comics, if you ask me, but I would say that it's probably around there. And I know that this is 90s Spider-Man. So, you know, and from that time, I think that that's probably one of my favorite artworks from for Spider-Man. Having those uh, big eyes and that sharp, I guess, design to the eyes and everything. So when it comes to that, uh, it is pretty good. And I know that this is um, different than the standard or the first release of this figure. I know that there are differences when it comes to the paint, obviously the paint. And some people would say that it is different um, when it comes to plastic quality. As you could see, it has more of a matte finish than a glossy one. I mean, you could still see some glossiness, but at the same time, you know, the figure does really feel high quality for what it is. But unfortunately, I feel like it has the same problem as other uh, Mafex figures that it does fade the paint does fade a bit and the web lines have faded a little bit and i don't know why um mafex has that problem because i noticed that in my mafex iron spider uh, from the mcu that the gold finish or the gold paint around the spider and everything started to fade away and you know that was really a factor in me selling it off because you know I wanted something that would like look good and I wanted to handle it a lot and I usually like to handle my figures but other than that the detail the sculpt and the paint is really good and it's pretty amazing unfortunately mine did come with a chip on the calf so there's a QC issue for you guys. So unfortunately in a perfect world, we would have a figure that has no QC issues with paint or anything, but you know, stuff happens at the factory, I guess. And you know, for what you pay for, you know, it is disappointing. Um, 
And also one thing I should have mentioned too is the MSRP. So the MSRP I believe is uh, $58 around there. And I got this from Amiami, but with shipping from, you know, Japan and everything, and ended up being around $79 for me personally, less than 80. And I think that's a pretty good deal because I've seen other companies or imported companies charge way more for uh, this figure or any imported figures up to like 90 to 100 dollars which i think it's pretty much crazy but you know when you factor in the the importing that they have to do and then how much they would have to sell to make profit if you want it cheaper i guess just import it yourself from amiyami or any other website i think you would probably get it cheaper even though shipping would you know add up Unfortunately, it would be like around $20, uh, I guess, depending where you live. With all that said, let's get into the articulation. This figure does not fail anything or any expectations I had for this figure. I've seen a ton of reviews of this guy or its other uh, variations like the Symbiote and the Ben Riley and its original. So he can go up very well. He can go down. He can go side to side pretty well. He can look left and right and do all that. He has two joints, one up here and the other one down here at the neck. He can go all the way around. He can go about this far up and he does have butterfly joints that work really well. He has bicep swivel too and double jointed elbows and his Wrist can go any direction as long as you know you point them that way and he does have a diaphragm joint that can move about this far down and this far back it can move side to side and it can rotate just be careful though and he does have a lower diaphragm joint too which can go about this far down this far back and can go side to side and rotate too but combining these two is probably one of the better features of this figure. Gives you more range. And for hip, he can kick about this far up. He does have drop down joints on both hips, which help the figure a lot when it comes to articulation. He doesn't have any thigh swivel, but he does have like that inner thigh swivel. So it, it kind of does hide it. And he does have double jointed knees no boot swivel unfortunately but he can rotate at the ankles and he can go down can go up and has toe joints as well so just like the figures the amount of accessories is pretty packed uh maybe you get one extra item because it's a condensed and a re-release but what you get with the accessories well i wouldn't count this as an accessory but he does come with a certifying genuine product, which would certify that this is not a bootleg because there are a lot of those uh, when it comes to uh, knockoffs, imports, a lot of companies try to jump off the hype train for this. And sometimes they do a good job and other times they just do horribly. So he does come with another head. Let's get a closer look. This one is a more angrier head, and I do like it, but obviously I prefer the the regular head better. He does come with does come with two pairs of open hands, which I would say that are wall crawling hands. He comes with another pair of relaxing hands. He does have his classic thwip pants. Also has these, I guess, web holding hands too, which is great. Let me see if I go focus them. Here is the pair of magnetic hands, which I love that this figure and other Spider-Man figures come with a magnetic option. Um, right now I have his magnetic feet on and he does come with his regular pair of feet. As I mentioned before, he does come with his web accessories. He has a lot of webs like around 
six yeah he comes with around like six webs and he does come with the stands too which again is pretty much needed when it comes to having a spider-man figure so next here we come at my favorite part the size comparison now i have a lot of uh, marvel figures and a lot of spider-man that are ready to be compared so just get ready for this so first we have let me see if i can get and stand up straight we have the toy biz uh 2004 spider-man we have the amazing fantasy spider-man we also have the ultimate spider-man that's with some weathering as you could see that you know these are basically sorry for my cat they are basically all a version of classic spider-man in some sort of way and they all have most of them all have that darker color scheme um i did weather my ultimate spider-man figure for i don't know some dumb reasons that i thought it'd be cooler um, but you can see that they vary in heights. I think that the Mayfix is, no, the Mayfix is the second shortest. The Ultimate Spider-Man is the shortest. And, you know, the taller ones is probably the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man and the Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. But here are all of those Spider-Men. And here we have the Symbiote Spider-Man next to the Mayfix Spider-Man. As you can see that the Spider-Man on their newer body mold is taller but you could see how differently uh they're built when it comes to their muscle mass and proportions and stuff like that uh but also adding in other characters here is the marvel legends moon knight and the mezco daredevil We also have the Marvel Legends Black Panther and the movie Venom for a size comparison. And I think that, hold on, let me. Uh, I think that the Marvel Legends uh, movie Venom and the Spider-Man, uh, they mix well together. You could definitely, I think they're sized appropriately since Venom is, I guess, supposed to be bigger. And, you know, I think this is serviceable when it comes to uh, if you want to put them in any action scene or action poses and stuff like that. I think that's a pretty good viable option. It has that ability to like mix and match with any comic uh, figure Marvel Legends that you have. So definitely not a bad option for you. So overall, um, after reviewing the figure, I would probably say that this is probably one of the best spider-man that you could get of course there are other alternatives that you can find that are pretty good and you know that save you money and if you guys are thinking about uh, buying this figure make sure you you know buy them for best price um, don't go rushing in at Big Bad Toy Store or I guess Entertainment Earth because you're gonna find them really expensive uh, make sure to look at sites like Ami Ami or Hobby Genki or something. Um, again, this figure does have its issues, but I would say that there are minor when it comes to the overall grand scheme of things. And again, if you like Spider-Man, check this figure out. So overall, if I had to rate this figure, I'd probably give it an 8 out of 10. Because, um, mostly because of the paint, I would say the, the chip chipping of the paint and probably i would say that the the web lines that fade um over time that is kind of a little bit bothersome but other aspects of the figure i would say that it's fine the articulation is there and the motion range of motion is there the paint for the most part is on point uh but you know there are those issues so just consider all your options and I appreciate you guys watching this video. Please make sure to check out my other platforms. Please like and subscribe. And yeah, peace. I'll catch you in the next video.